I've just been very space focused in pretty much everything I've done career wise, uh, which has been exciting and having a disability um, and always wanting to go to space. It was kind of always a limiting factor. And despite that, you know, I've applied to be an astronaut twice, knowing full well that I'm not going to get accepted, but, you know, just to do it anyways. One of the things we're looking at combining is if we combine the textures for the blind low vision group with the handholds of the mobility impairment group, how does that affect things? So if you've got handholds all down the wall and each of them is textured differently, that provides a different amount of information, then you combine those two right there. And the way that affects, where that benefits everyone is that say you are flying in space and the power goes out and you suddenly don't have lights. Well, now you already have a system in place that can help you navigate in the dark. And so it's things like that that we're looking to implement to make sure that everyone um, can benefit from the solutions. And so there were 12 ambassadors selected for flight one. Everybody has a ridiculously impressive background. The ambassadors are chosen to represent uh, well, themselves, but also uh, the disability world, their di you know disability category, um, provide transparency on uh, their experiences, both with their disability and in the flight, and um, their ability to communicate that outward uh, to the world. And each of the impairment groups was looking at researching different aspects of things that they would need to improve their effectiveness in microgravity and space travel. So we're starting out with initially a series of parabolic flights, which is an, an airplane uh, on zero G corporations, uh, cargo plane, which uh, flies up and, and does parabola like maneuvers um, in the sky. So when you're on that downward portion, um, you actually experience less gravity. With the mobility impairment group, we're really looking at motion related things. So how do you move from point to point in microgravity if you don't have full control of your body? How do you stay still in microgravity? The deaf, uh, low hearing group, they were working on ways to enhance communication and best communicate what is going on in the flight. Because uh, if you can't speak and can't hear um, and you're using American Sign Language, ASL, that doesn't always work as well when you're upside down or when you're floating. And then the blind low vision group was really trying to figure out things related to situational awareness. So if you don't have gravity as an indicator of where you are and you can't feel the ground, how do you know where you are in microgravity? The most critical part of everything is, can you safely get back to your seat and buckle in before you really need to be buckled in. I think we had like a 90% success rate at everyone getting back into the, their appropriate locations and the proper orientation. And so when we hit the, the second lunar parabola uh, and the weight started lifting off, I pushed off the ground. For the first time in my life, I was standing unassisted, um, which was like a, a huge moment, like way more profound to me than I thought it would be. Um, and it was something that was completely unexpected and it was really exciting to be able to experience that. And that just opened like a whole window of possibilities and opportunities of things that I just hadn't considered before. This flight serves as the foundation for all of the other amazing things we're going to accomplish over the next few years. We want to work up to, to true space flight and um, show that there's, you know, nothing holding back any of these people from being able to fly to space, uh, enjoy it, and also not be a liability and even contribute positively to um, a lot of the things going on there and uh, aid in the mission and uh, dream of humanity becoming a spacefaring civilization.